I feel like I'm like in a herd of buffalo and they're all stampeding toward a thousand foot drop off and they're just running over the edge and I'm in that herd and I'm like I ain't going there you know I'm, I'm not gonna go down that way so I have to somehow affect the whole herd so that they will take a left turn or a right turn and not go off this edge and so if humanity takes the planet down the tubes <laughs> I'm dead I'm trying to save my ass. And that is a powerful force. Wonderful, inventive, unique person who uh, looks at life in a different way from most people. Yes, always full of ideas. In fact, when Mike becomes quiet, you know that there's an idea hatching. Ahead of his time, unusual, likes to do things his own way, stubborn. I was raised as a Baptist. No dancing, no drinking, no gambling. So I got the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> I went to architectural school in the University of Cincinnati, took all the architectural courses, got my degree, and I began right then to think that architecture, as, it's, as it stood then, was worthless. Had nothing to do with the planet. It had barely had anything to do with people and what they needed. I love to draw, I love to build, but the profession of architecture is nowhere near addressing the issues that we are faced with. They have the opportunity to really guide us and take us to where we need to go. And they're not. They're taking us where we don't need to go. We're running out of oil. We're running out of water. Uh, we have global warming. We're, population's expanding. For many reasons, we don't have time. We need to be doing something now, tomorrow morning. Did you get your black water under control? Yeah. All right. Is that working like we wanted it to? Uh, do like three in each of these tops. Yeah, the tops Instead will be riveted one, together. Yeah, I'm just trying to get some I started all this thinking with quality of life in mind. We're talking about survival now. It's all good. So it's 24 and a half with no sun and power being used. That's the final overflow that just goes to the septic of this. Yeah. But the final overflow for all the planners can still is come right here. here and go through here. Yeah. To hook into the septic. Straight to the septic. Okay, I'm there. We know that in the future, we are rendering this planet damn near uninhabitable. So as we move closer toward that, we're trying to devise a method of living that allows people to take care of themselves. The Phoenix. There is nothing coming into this house. No power lines, no gas lines, no sewage lines going out, no water lines coming in, no energy being used. So we're sitting on 6,000 gallons of water, food growing, sewage internalized, 70 degree space year round. 
What these kind of houses are doing is taking every aspect of your life and putting it into your own hands. A family of four could totally survive here without even going to the store. So that whole area is going to be food production yeah. with birds and insects flying around. Then out here is going to be goats and chickens and ducks. So this will be literally an Amazon jungle with 20 foot tall trees and little platforms up there where you can hang out with trees, birds, parrots, uh, canaries, you know, bugs, bees, butterflies. It's a direction for humanity, really. I've been doing it for 30 years and I think I'm starting to scratch the surface of what is available in this gold mine that we're starting to penetrate. Solar 1019, the world's most powerful solar radio station, and it's time to open up the sports page for today, and i got to tell you what a wild, and I mean wild, week it was in uh, high school football playoffs over the weekend. Two of the most shocking results, I think, in the history of high school football. Mike's biggest obsession is work. Definitely work. And I wake up in the middle of the night to get a drink of water or something. There's Mike laying there, staring into space. I'm always dreaming about the room that I'm working on or whatever. I was sleeping, I had a dream, and I just saw this seashell type shape that you would walk into. And But then I took the sketch to Ted and told him, you know, I just dreamed this, Ted, and here's what I'm trying to get. And I made pictures and everything. And then we talked about how to do it, and then Ted made it happen. And I take my dreams to him, and they make my dreams happen. And then it becomes their dreams too.